She ain't ready with it. There are going to be most of you out there watching this that you know what we're saying is true, but you're saying, I ain't ready yet. Uh -huh. Okay, I accept that. At least you're being honest about it. Shalom, I'm John Carney Roth. Anthony Hill. And you're watching Through the Eyes of an Elder discussions where we tackle different subjects from Scripture and how it relates to our walk with Yahshua HaMashiach. And we try to get into more than just the surface of the Scriptures. We try to dig down deep and put ourselves into the Scripture to try to understand the dynamics of what's really going on um, in these discussions that we have because... The trickery of the devil, as we spoke in the last one, is, is quite extensive. Mm -hmm. And you really need to equip yourself to be able to understand what's going on, especially in these end times that we're coming into. And um, so today's title is Holding On to Unrighteousness. And this is about those who stay in uh, their unrighteousness and think that they can justify it by needing to not repent. Mm -hmm. And boy, I've met so many people over the years that do that. They just... they They... They find themselves trapped in a situation, and we're in the opening comments here. Mm -hmm. uh, they find themselves trapped in a situation in which there's no way out. Well, the perception is there's no way out. There right. really is a, a way out, uh -huh. but that would require humility. Mm -hmm. And as we talked about in the last uh, teaching um, about uh, Judah, mm -hmm. who could have took a wrong road, but he took a humble way out and admitted that he was wrong and what he did, and that Tamar was actually the cleaner person of the two. But yet, you know, today with Yahshua's spirit supposedly residing in us, so many people don't do that. Mm -hmm. So many people want to cover up what they're doing, and they want to justify that what they're doing is okay. And how dare you, Anthony, how dare you try to tell me and judge me? Shame on you for judging me. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Now you're judging me for the very thing you told me I can't judge you, mm -hmm. you know? So the knife kind of cuts in two directions, you know? And you got to be quick about this because this is an unclean spirit working through a person who's supposed to be a believer, but has hardened their heart into maintaining this position that they're in of unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any reason in the world why I need to change what I'm doing. I'm thank you very much. Thank you. Go away. <laughs> Leave me alone. You know, I mean, I've had people tell me all kinds of stuff. And that's about the time it's time to rip a second hole in their rear end. He loved you me know? just like I am. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> that don't cut with me uh, at all. So I I've got so many stories about that. Maybe I'll come up with a few. I don't know. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I really get the sense that one of the reasons why Yahshua has us doing these discussions the way that we are is not just to go in deeper, but I think what it is, is that what Yahshua is saying to me, and I believe to you, is that we're entering to a time now where I am no longer willing to put up with this state of mind anymore, mm -hmm. this spiritual condition that you have. Mm -hmm. And Really, when you think about the, the bride-to-be, the woman who, I'm not talking about the great whore, I'm talking about the woman that's supposed to marry Yahshua, is operating like a whore right now. She's mixing different ideologies in, and it's unrighteous, and she's sleeping with different lovers, and I'm not willing to give them up just yet. Mm -hmm. But there's coming a time, we know from Scripture, where she's finally going to say, that's it. I've had enough of these abusive husbands I've been with. I'm going to return back to the first husband. Mm -hmm. And then he'll deal nicely with her and he'll nourish her in a place of safety. But until then, we have this condition of this unrighteousness within this woman that we're talking to. And it's not, this is not intended strictly for the bride to be, but this is also for those Gentiles who are in the churches who are being led by Yahweh's Spirit to come out of the church and the unrighteousness and come into righteousness, to walk the righteous life the way that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's also for the Jews that I know they're studying about Yahshua. 
I know there are Jews out there that believe in Yahshua. Mm -hmm. And they got a lot of pressure on them in their Jewish communities because it'd be extricated from them, their families, their friends. And that's a hard thing in the Jewish culture, you yes, know? Yes. Uh, but it's quite common because they consider you dead. But at some point, you're going to have to decide to leave the other unrighteousness alone and come to this righteousness. We're all on borrowed time. We don't have forever to keep playing this game. So I'm imploring and I'm requesting and I'm asking those of you out there who know you're playing this game, mm -hmm. please get real with yourself. Yes. Please stop. Let Stay with us during this, this next hour or so and let's look at these different conditions of this unrighteousness and this unwillingness to repent and the consequences of what happens when we do this. And we're going to look at some scriptures for that. You got uh, something you want to chime in on? Uh, just just um, briefly, John, just to uh, really continue to, to just expound on how blessed I am because uh, it's things, you know, and I, I relate, I, I'm tending now to relate to both lifestyles I had, you know, and how holding on to one will keep you away from the other. You can't serve and, two and, masters. Right. You love one or you hate the other. That's it. And, and yeah. you have to make the decision mm -hmm. to let go. And when I finally got to that place of hum humility, that I was able to let that thing go that was hu humiliating to me because I want to be have some joy, you know, not saying that everything over here is going to be joyful. You're going to have some tears mm -hmm. in this walk, but it ain't going to be no tears uh, based on the decisions you made that you shouldn't have did. You know, it's going to be decisions. Uh, uh, and, based and you know what? Also, too, before you go any further, mm -hmm. are you willing to make the right decisions knowing that the tears are going to come because of it? Exactly. That's a hard one. And, That's and, a hard one. And I was just thinking when you were saying, and I know this to be true about uh, when a, a Jewish person wants to come to the Messiah, how their family is so willing to cut them off. And I know that's got to be a hard decision oh, for yeah. them to make. Terrible. But the right thing is always the hard thing. And um, how did Paul write this in Romans? He said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, for it's the power right. of Yahweh until salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first. This 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 message went to them first. So who on the, who a part of them <clears throat> that didn't get the message? Who's blinding them from the message? Turn loose that unrighteous way. You know, as Isaiah said, let everybody forsake their unrighteous ways, said Yahweh. And so for me, sitting here, I get a picture of something that I'm being warned against, you know, that already happened that I got, I got a notice, I got a information that something has happened that I shouldn't get involved with. And so am I still going to go get involved with it? Already being warned against it? I'm, in other words, am I going to hold on to them unrighteous ways, knowing that I shouldn't hold on, being warned that they are unrighteous ways? How can you love someone and then cut them off and then accept somebody else who believes the same thing that they believe? How can that happen? You know, um, one of the benefits of being an elder, mm -hmm. when you've been around a long time, you've had a long time to do a lot of unrighteous stuff. Yes. And then look back and see consistently negative effect, negative effect, negative effect, negative effect. And then you get to a point in your life where you say, ain't worth it no more. Ain't worth it no more. I don't like getting my can kicked up and down the street by mm -hmm. Joshua. Mm -hmm. You know, this foolishness has got to stop. Like you say, you know, we get this foolitis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the disease of foolitis, you know. And when you can get to that age of your life, when you get past the foolitis and you start walking in righteousness or at least attempting mm -hmm. to stay away from the unrighteousness because life has now trained you very well. And unrighteousness will train you very well because mm -hmm. it will kick your butt up and down the street. Mm -hmm. And eventually your brain starts to shut down and say, 
look, either I'm going all in on this unrighteousness or I'm done. I'm checking out of this thing and I'm going over to Yahshua because it's a whole lot better over there. Well, mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to say about this woman that's the, the bride-to-be. Sooner or later, she says, you know, I'm getting tired of this abuse. Mm -hmm. When do you get when do you get to that point? Right. When do you have that defining moment when you say, I've had enough of this abuse? There's got to be a better way. She ain't ready yet. Yeah. They'll In my ready. estimation, she ain't ready with it. There are going to be most of you out there watching this that you know what we're saying is true. We're saying, I ain't ready yet. Uh -huh. Okay. I accept that. At least you're being honest about it. Go out there. Get abused. Keep suffering the consequences of what you're doing. Eventually, your brain is going to shut down and say, this ain't going to work. Mm -hmm. And when you get to that point, what does the scripture say? Yahweh says, come, let us reason together. Mm-hmm. Right now, we might not be able to reason together. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to convey to you what we're going to convey from our experience. But whether you accept it or not, it's not for us to say. Right. But we do know there's coming a time when the pressure on the world is going to get to the point and it's going to come to bear down on top of you that you're going to finally have to make a decision. You're going to cry. You can't go on this side or you're going to be on that side. Mm -hmm. One or the other. And we know there's a certain number that are going to make the right decision, and there's going to be a certain number that are going to make the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. That's totally in Yahshua's hands. So we got past the opening comments, or unless you got something more you want to add to that. No, sir. No, you good? Yes. Okay. So holding on to unrighteousness, you grabbed in the point number one. We're doing three points, as we try to always do. Uh, you picked Acts chapter 5, verses 7 through 9. And what you're saying in here, what I got out of this is losing the spirit catches you unaware. Mm -hmm. Losing the spirit catches you unaware. This is what I got out of what you picked. So in verse 7, it says, yeah. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. We use part the of this. Same thing in other... we use, no, this is a different set of scripture, but oh. in the same account. Oh, okay. I, I'm just going by what you gave me. So I ain't taking the blame <laughs> on this one. <laughs> I do enough other stuff on my own. I don't need to take and inherit your stuff. All right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So in verse eight, no, I think it'll work. It'll, mm -hmm. It works. Otherwise, I would have called you out on it. Um, and Peter answered where an address was expected of her. So in other words, he's standing in front of her. Mm -hmm. He already knows the game she's playing. Mm -hmm. She don't know that he knows. Mm -hmm. And so he's addressing her in a way that's like, I want to see what you're going to say. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm asking you this, what are you going to say? Mm -hmm. this, this is what it's trying to convey. Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Did you sell it for this much money? She said, yes, in a strong oh. affirmation. So much so. Okay. <laughs> Boy, she's quite, she want to really convey to Peter mm -hmm. that she's on board. She's solid with this. Nobody going to take. She's mm -hmm. being extra defensive. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. Okay. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed so harmoniously in such a compact together with her husband mm -hmm. to test, tempt, and scrutinize the spirit of the master? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. Oh, my goodness. This this is this is crazy. But uh, listen, it was I, sometime I look at this little, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. It's a crime um, television uh, program called F The First 48. I don't think and, I heard of it. and sometimes, you know, they have to solve this crime within the first 48 hours. Oh, I see. You know, and so sometimes they get people who have conspired together and committed a murder, right? Uh -huh. And they catch the one to try to get them to tell on the other one, but they don't know that the other one already done confessed. So they go in there and it's like, they don't have a, yep, nope. They stick into their story, right? And then all of a sudden, here comes the police with the other person on film implicating and, them. And you probably know this from experience with your background. Yeah. First thing they're going to do is split everybody up into different rooms. That's what they did. And, and they, they, they tell you lies and try to <laughs> deceive you, to trick you into saying something. 
you know, that you leak it out, and the other guy in the other room don't know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. He's hoping you're covering his butt. You already conspired together. If we yeah. get caught, what's what's going, what you're going right. to say, and what right. you're not going to say. Like we used to ride up the road, and I might sometime I might have somebody riding with me. I didn't want to drive by myself, and so um, I would say, if we get pulled over, this is our story, because they're gonna they're gonna separate us. This is our story. Hoping he stick to the story because I'm sticking to the story. And so that's what I pretty much see um, with Ananias Safari. Three hours, John, like we said in, in the last segment. Three hours have passed and you haven't seen them. And, <laughs> yeah. and yet, yeah, you know what you're doing is wrong. And you're going to go in and you ain't seen it. You got to start thinking what has happened to them because they didn't come back and let me know everything was a go. Everything was all okay. Now, in today's society, you got a chance to, to cop out and say, uh, I'm not going to say anything until I get an attorney. Right. And right, they can't right. question you no more. Right. But some of these uh, people don't have sense enough to say that. They right. go and think that they can get away with the, with the um, lie. So they go ahead and know, I got nothing to hide. Well, you know you have something to hide. And so he's showing me that we got people in the faith who are trying to hide stuff that they know they should go head on and, and repent of and come clean so that this stuff can be forgiven and, and clean and taken away because you're not going to be able to hide it too long. It's going to come up because I might not see it, but there's one person that we know do see it, and that's Yahweh, mm -hmm. and he's going to show you out, you know, and there's too many scriptures in the Bible that shows you Nobody was able to hide their transgression. Mm -hmm. All of them was revealed. And if we can't show you one person, then we'll just show you a whole nation. He used Israel. Every time they sinned, everybody saw it. And so everybody knew how to get them to sin or try to uh, in, 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 um, encourage them into sin, you know, and trap them in some kind of way to get Israel to get the punishment that they know they're going to get if they do that thing. And yet they do it. And it's the same thing today. Yet they still do it, knowing they're going to get caught. And then they get on television and they start crying. Yeah. You had, how many times you, opportunities you had before you got caught? I know you didn't get caught within three hours because this thing been going on for years because you got a little kid mm -hmm. running into the picture now that's that you couldn't hide mm -hmm. no longer because now they old enough to come up to look for you you know and, and, and it's just amazing john to me how people choose to hold on to sin right um so when i was looking at this you know, I, I had stated losing the spirit catches you unaware. Mm -hmm. Now, these are two believers mm -hmm. and they're conspiring. It's a different kind of spirit. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, Yahweh's spirit removes away from them. And they may not even be consciously aware because they allowed another spirit to come in to that relationship to conspire with each other to try to trick the Ruach HaKodesh. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that Yahweh made sure the two of them got separated. So neither one knew what happened to the other one. Mm -hmm. But they mo both met the same demise. Yes, they did. So you better be careful when you're indulging in this kind of stuff and you call yourself a believer. Lest when you least expect it, while you're plotting to cover up your unrighteousness, Yahweh removes his spirit and you're now being set up for the fall. Yes. And in this case, it cost them their life. And I would venture to say, in this case, if they were believers at all, they lost their eternal salvation. Mm -hmm. So when they try to say you can't lose your eternal salvation, I'm telling you right now that the greatest sin against the Ruach of Kodesh is the blaspheme the Ruach HaKodesh. Mm -hmm. This is an example of blaspheming the Ruach HaKodesh mm -hmm. because you're basically saying, I can outwit the Ruach HaKodesh, mm -hmm. which means you abdicated 
your responsibility to the Ruach of Yahweh, the spirit of Yahweh, mm -hmm. and you substitute it with another spirit. Mm -hmm. And so now his spirit is gone and you've taken on the spirit of Satan, which is deception mm -hmm. and stealing. Yep. And, and, and Peter told him, you have not lied to me, but to Yahweh. To exactly. Mm -hmm. So they lost their life. And I guarantee you they lost, they'll be up in the third resurrection, mm -hmm. which is a resurrection to condemnation. So continuing on with this, holding on with unrighteousness, <clears throat> um, I found in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 18 through 19, two rewards, two rewards. Mm -hmm. So in verse 18, it says the wicked who is morally wrong and condemned man does deceptive work. But he who sows righteousness, moral virtue to prosperity will have a sure reward. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 19, as righteousness of moral virtue to prosperity leads to life. So he who pursues evil pursues it to his own death. Mm -hmm. There you go. That illustrates what happened to them. Yes. You got something you want to say about it? No, just, no? just the point of, of, of being able to stand, you know, in your righteousness. Don't give up because his word is sure. And if we say he can't lie, if he tell us if we if we pursue righteousness, we get the reward of righteousness. If we pursue unrighteousness, then we get the reward of unrighteousness, mm -hmm. which is all throughout the scriptures from beginning to end. What you sow is what you it, reap. Yes. That's it, it. it. Simple. Yep. Yep. Just that simple. And yet it's hard for us to uh, hold fast. It's something I always come to get you to veer off, <clears throat> of course, you know, and. What more do he need to do to hold us on course? You know, what more can he do? He's equipping us with so much knowledge and that a lot of them didn't have. At, at, you know, they had, uh, you could say, they had the knowledge of the Torah. Uh -huh. And they had the knowledge of the uh, half Torah, of all the stuff that their fathers did before them, you know. But now that they're coming into this new faith and they think they can get oh, they think that they can get away from the Torah, the punishment of the Torah, mm -hmm. even as they teach it today. Yeshua came and he did away with the Torah. But right here is an example that well, the scripture says where there is no law, there's no sin. Right. Where there's no sin, there's no transgression. Well, if there's no transgression, why are you suffering consequences? Exactly. Negative ones at that. Yeah, they might say, oh, that's not punishment. That's just consequences. Your sin have been forgiven, well, are but you there's feeling still consequences. Are you feeling oppressed right now? <laughs> or are you feeling like you're at a party? I don't Come know. Come on, man. Yeah. You know, people hide in this unrighteousness, and mm -hmm. they try to be very deceptive, and they try to weasel their way around the explanation, which is what I was saying from the beginning, and it's all foolishness. It's time to get right. Right. That means get rid of unrighteousness so you can be right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So <clears throat> point number two, you came up with Romans chapter one, verse 24 through 27. And what I got out of this was a deep flaming fire, a deep flaming fire. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and read. It says in verse 24, therefore, Elohim also gave them up as to be put in prison to uncleanliness of a demonic source. In the lust, as a longing for what is forbidden of their hearts, to dishonor, to shamefully despise their bodies amongst themselves. I thought that was very interesting. To shamefully despise their bodies. Mm -hmm. What these people are doing in their sexual activity is actually saying that they actually hate their own bodies, mm -hmm. that they would want to desecrate it. Mm -hmm. Now, on a conscious level, they don't understand that. Mm -hmm. But deep down in their spirit, this is what it's saying that they, how they really feel about themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very interesting, the wording in this. Verse 25. Who exchanged the truth of Yahweh, which is the Torah, for the lie and worshipped with adoration and served as giving religious homage to the creature. In other words, the other person you're engaging with mm -hmm. of creation rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 26, 
For this reason, Elohim gave them up as to be put in prison to vile, infamous, and disgraceful passions. Mm -mm -mm. Wow, that's descriptive. For even their woman exchanged to the point of making different the natural, instinctive, lineal descent physically. In other words, what he's saying is, you inherited, when you were born, you were inherited with a heterosexual mindset. Mm -hmm. I identify as a male, or I am a female, mm -hmm. and I have natural desires in the opposite direction based on that natural lineage that you've got. Mm -hmm. Now, there is an exception to that rule where I've seen where you have uh, generational curses where maybe you had homosexuals in your family lineage and you inherited that unclean spirit into you when you were born, okay? Mm -hmm. I've seen stuff like that. I'm, that's kind of like the exception to the rule. I'm not really talking about that because a lot what they're finding out is these are learned lifestyles mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that came through some sort of oppression and psychological trauma in a person's life and they've departed out. Like I've known women that had consistently bad relationships with men when they were younger mm -hmm. to the point where they found men disgusting and they found the kind of emotional, um, uh, what's the kind of emotional depth that they got from another woman that they couldn't find in a man. So they found their passion over there with another woman. And on a certain level, it's kind of understandable. But what that's really saying to me is you're lacking something deep inside you that you need another human being to fill who really can't fill it. And they certainly can't fill it in the natural order of things, which is what he's talking about here. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what it's really saying is, is that Yahweh is really the only one who can really fill it the proper way in the right context. Mm -hmm. You're looking to the creation to give you your happiness when it never really comes from that in the first place. Right. Humans will let you down. Mm -hmm. I've known a lot of women that indulge in that kind of stuff, you know, and they're going from one woman to another just like they went from one man to another. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference? Yeah. You're exactly. searching for something that you can't find. Mm -hmm. And that's a clue. And they cheat on each other. And they Just cheat like on each other. Yeah, that, that, that's yeah. a Now, some don't. Some are monogamous. Well, some men and women don't cheat. It's the same. Yeah. Uh, Those uh, rules are meant to be broken yeah. when you indulge in them different lifestyles. Um, but again, you know, when you're looking for something outside of yourself, mm -hmm. in this creation, it could be money. It could be fame. It could be sexual uh, relationships with the same sex or different sex, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, there's something fundamentally wrong with looking for something on the outside mm -hmm. that you think can satisfy you, you on the inside. inside. We do it with food. Mm -hmm. We do it with money. Mm -hmm. You know, how many times do you crave something and then you go like, you know, you want whatever, it doesn't matter what it is, some kind of food, and you go eat it, and in that moment, you're satisfied, but as soon as you leave out of that restaurant, you're back to the same old self you were before. Mm -hmm. And you do it over and over and over again, never really solving the problem in the first place. And don't have enough common sense to even ask yourself the question, this is madness. What am I doing to myself? Yeah, they need that bread that they don't hunger no more and that water. That they don't thirst. There no you more. go. I'm in. That's what they need. And that's the whole mm -hmm. point. That's what we need. I put that's it. the whole point of the mm -hmm. futility mm -hmm. of that kind of behavior. You know, whether it's with food or sexual relationships or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Right. You're looking Good for point. something on the outside that was never designed to, to fulfill satisfy. the void that right. you have inside of you. Never did. And I can understand somebody in that position who hasn't gotten to that point yet. But this is why we're bringing these scriptures out. Exactly. To reason with you. If you're at that place in your life where you've done this and done that, you tried this and you tried that, and you're still not fulfilled, maybe now's the time you need to reason with yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that's when Yahshua can enter into the situation mm -hmm. and heal you of all these ailments that you got so that you can really figure out who you really are. Mm -hmm. Because you have, a, you have to have an identity change. Remember in the fellowship, I spent a year and a half giving messages on what is our true identity. 
Mm-hmm. One message after another. Nobody got it. Nobody got it. Mm-mm-mm. It's up on YouTube. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Verse 27. Likewise, in mm-hmm. a similar manner, yep. also the men, that ego. leaving the natural instinctive lineal descent physically, use of the woman, in other words, man having a natural He'll desire for a woman, woman, he's going to leave that. Mm-hmm. That's the natural instinctive lineal descent. Okay, right. that tells you that the instinctiveness of that mindset was in you and it got squished out mm-hmm. for something else. You had to have selective behavior and belief in order to get rid of that instinctive belief mm-hmm. system that was originally given to you. Use of woman burn with a deep flame of fire in their lust and excitement of their mind for one another. Mm-hmm. So men for men. As I said, men for men committing what is shameful, indecent use of their genitals. Mm, mm, mm. That's in the Greek. Mm, mm, mm. Now, you don't read that in your English Bible or your Spanish Bible, but if that's what's in the Greek. That's why we're bringing this stuff out. Mm-hmm. Because we want you to understand the impact of what these words were religiously intended to mean, and the translators didn't really bring it out. Mm-hmm. And receiving in themselves the penalty of their error Mm -mm. by straying from orthodoxy, which was due as a necessary binding. So in other words, what it's saying is because you choose to go down this road and leave orthodoxy of morality, Mm -hmm. you have no choice but be bound with necessity, this error of reward and the penalty that you get from it. Mm -hmm. You're not getting out of it. You're going to suffer the consequences. Mm -hmm. You're going to be bound to something, either yeah. the wrong thing or the right thing. Right. But they choose to be loose, fight to get loose from righteousness, right. only to be in prison to right. unrighteousness. Right. You know, and I think I said it too earlier, and I guess I have to keep pounding it in because I come out of a world, you know, that all of this stuff happening in that world, and then come over into this world and see the same thing happening, that they knew this stuff was unrighteous, but they took pleasure in doing this stuff. You know, this is in Israel. They took pleasure in doing it. This, this We taught that the oracles of Yahweh were given to them. So they had the knowledge that this stuff was wrong, but now the ones who were teaching it was wrong <laughs> They applauding the ones that's doing it wrong. Some of them until did. they start yeah. participating mm-hmm. in it, until Yahweh just get. Well, go ahead. Let me get give y'all over to that one there because um, mm-hmm. I'm not going to tolerate it any longer with you. And so why why would we um, today? Yeah. So wait. So um, so when you have to deal with a person who is being incorrigible. Mm-hmm in a bad way, and you strive with them, and you strive with them, and they just, I, I'm, not, I'm not listening to what you say. At some point, you're going to get frustrated. And you say, that's it. I, I, I'm going to have to leave you alone. you got to. You're on your own now, yeah. bro. You're on your own. You got I've done to. as much as I can do for mm-hmm. you. I can only help somebody that really wants help. If you don't want help, you're on your own now. That's, that's where I'm at with people, you know, and I'm like, well, all I'm doing is telling you. I'm not going to debate it with you or argue with you. If you don't want to do it, you just don't want to do it. But, man, you can't have that relationship, right. you know. So you're going to have to go in and join yourself to do because you can't have both both, mm-hmm. both lives, you know. And that's what is being taught today. You can have both lives. You see it in Hollywood. You see all the stuff they do in Hollywood, and yet when they get their awards, they try to give the credit to to, to Yahweh in heaven that <laughs> yeah. he he's approved right. of this stuff. Right. And so because of their much money and everything, even the people over here who know that's not acceptable applauds them and really looks up to Pure them. Pressure. Now they serving the yeah. creature. Right. You know, right. you're worshiping the creature and you leaving off from the creator. It's it, man, that last discussion we had about Satan devices is there and it causes you to pick up unrighteousness and, and 
refuse to let it go. You fight to hold this unrighteous right. ways because you find ways to think that money is 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 the right thing. It got to be coming from him because they making money, you know. And and that's not necessarily true. It's not necessarily true. How many rich people we see that he uh, promoted? Right. Put it like that. Uh-huh. How many of them was really rich? <clears throat> Which one of them prophets was really rich? Yeah, no, it wasn't an easy life at all. Um, so eventually unrighteousness is um, going to have its day in court. Mm-hmm. And eventually, for those of us who are seeking righteousness, we're going to get our vindication. Mm-hmm. And so this is kind of where this is going. So I found something interesting that I didn't see before. And I had to really think about this. And I'm not sure how I can express it, but I thought it was very interesting that if you hold on to righteousness, eventually you'll be spared of the unrighteous indignation that that is that. Well, you're going to be spared of the wrath that's going to come on the unrighteous Mm -hmm. in the hour trial that comes on the whole world. Yes. Which I don't believe is too far away. And so in number I found in numbers 15, verse 39 through 40. I found a metaphor that's interesting and it's for fleeing to a place of safety. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give a couple examples here and it speaks in a poetic kind of language, which I found to be very fascinating and has some ties to other uh, events that fall into this category about going to a place of safety. Now, so in numbers chapter 15, verse 39, it says, and you shall have the tassel, mm-hmm. the seat seat, one blue thread, mm-hmm. one blue thread, and the white threads. The blue thread stands for the royalty of the kingship of Yahshua Hamashik, one king mm-hmm. who's royal. Mm-hmm. If you look on the, the miter of the, the high priest, the Gon Hagadol, you have the blue bands, Uh which stands for royalty. It's a royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. Aren't we told in Hebrews we're from a royal priesthood? Yes. We're a priesthood. Mm -hmm. We don't act like priests, but we're priests. The white, the other part in his miter, is a reminder of the commandments Mm -hmm. and the righteousness, the pureness. Now, it's sad to see that a lot of people, and I'm going to get graphic here a little bit, but I don't really care because I want to make a point. Uh-huh. I see people in the body of Messiah wearing this not only without a blue, or if they do have a blue, this looks like it was dipped in the toilet in a cesspool. Mm. Brown. Mm-mm. You show me in scripture where these seat seats are supposed to look like they were dipped in poop. Take them damn things off and use the right ones if you're going to wear them. Mm-hmm. Because the poop stands for filthiness. Mm -hmm. It's not brown. It's white. Read your scriptures. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is an insult to Yahweh, and he don't like it. Take it off. It's not right. Mm -hmm. And I'm guaranteeing you, if you don't take it off, you're going to start suffering the consequences of defiling his garment. Uh You're using it in the wrong way. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Get rid of it. You have no biblical precedent for it whatsoever. But let's move on. Because this is going to get interesting. Mm -hmm. I can see that. (laughs) Okay. You shall have tassel, a wing-like projection, as a forelock of hair as gleaming in the air. Now, let me kind of break that down. So, there's a couple of things here. And we'll have more scriptures. So what Yahweh is saying is these tassels are kind of like a wing. Mm -hmm. And they glisten in the air. They gleam in the air. And what he's trying to convey in the Hebrew is that when the wind blows, it's like a feather. Mm -hmm. 
follow me. It's like a feather. It blows. So it's a, it does a couple of things. A royal king and priesthood, commandments and righteousness, cleanliness. And when it blows in the wind, it glistens, it's got colorful, and it's kind of like a wing. It says in the Hebrew, it's like a wing. Mm -hmm. It says right there. Mm -hmm. Now, follow me. I got to meditating on this. I thought, this is really interesting. Because mm -hmm. I didn't see this before. That you may look upon it and remember as a mark to be recognized oh. of all the commandments. Mm -hmm. The commandments were not dumped in poop. Okay? They're white. Mm -hmm. They're white like light. Read it in the scripture. The divine law of Torah of Yahweh and do them that you may not follow the harlotry that comes from idolatry to which your own heart and your own eyes are inclined to do. Mm -hmm. So we have a natural inclination to want to follow harlotry. Mm -hmm. That's a sign right there. We need to be, have to take an active role in fighting against that nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is to remind you of that. Verse 40. And that you may remember to do all my commandments, mitzvah, mm -hmm. the divine law, Torah law, and be holy to your Elohim. You got any thoughts? When you... Look like the wings. Uh, it 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 um. Well, two scriptures came to mind. Um, first one I believe was Psalm ninety one. Okay. Uh, he that dwelleth under the uh in the secret place of the Almighty shall abide under his shadow. Mm -hmm. Is the commandments. Right. You know the CC, and um, David declared, "If I had wings, like a morning dove, I fly away and be at." be at rest you right know? and and it's so much rest within him a, a matter of fact our fourth commandment teaches us to enter into this rest, rest you know like we're doing and so today. so yeah. mm -hmm. these are all places where we should continually abide within these commandments and yet everybody's seeking to get out of them to hold on to a, a way that's not eternal or Circumvent it in a way where it has the appearance mm -hmm. of it, but it's been greatly true. diluted. Exactly true, true, true. And so we're wrestling. We're we're in this uh, spiritual warfare, but they're they're uh, practicing as it's a carnal warfare when it's really spiritual. And if you don't put your spiritual mind on, you'll never recognize the spirit that you are obeying, uh, that you become obedient to until it manifests itself through your members. And once in every one of them, everybody, everybody, when you sin, it came through. It came through your hands, your feet, your eyes, or your mouth, or your ears. It came through your members, and it manifested itself to show you who you really are. And so those of you who holding on to it, it's already revealed you that you're holding on to your unrighteousness. Let it go. Take hold of righteousness. Pursue righteousness with all your heart. It's I don't I, I can't express this enough because it really when I tell you this thing really uh touched me because it was pushing at me so many years and I didn't know it was it, you know? And now I got here and it's I'm getting the, the the answer today, you know, that he was trying to relate to me maybe 40, 50 years ago. You know, mm -hmm. come on over here. This is the way I've designed for you. This is the way that I declare for you to walk in. Come in. Let me teach you how to walk in these ways. And yet I couldn't get there. I was trying to hold on to the uh, treasures of the world, to the desires of this flesh, because they were seeming to be more pleasant, even though a lot of little dips and dab happen. You know, it's like a whooping. Mm -hmm. You After you get the whooping and you cry a minute, then you right back to the same thing. The pain gone, you know? Yeah. Oh. All right, so... 
by staying in this righteousness, mm -hmm. in this thought pattern of eventually being able to be taken away from the unrighteous world mm -hmm. and being saved from it, okay, mm -hmm. is um, the thought about this process. So also in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 9 through 13, we have an example of fleeing to a place of safety. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we have that example, what Yahweh did with Israel. Mm -hmm. So this is interesting as well. So staying along this idea of what I'm saying. Uh -huh. For Yahweh's portion is his people as the congregation of Israel. Jacob, the heel catching supplanter, is the place of his inheritance, a patrimonial heirloom. He found, he found him in a des, uh, desert land and in the wasteland as a worthless empty place, a howling wilderness of desolation. He encircled him. Mm -hmm. He instructed him. Mm -hmm. He had kept him as the apple, which means the little man and pupil of his eye. Mm -hmm. It's not the whole eye. It's mm -hmm. the pupil, the small part. Mm -hmm. Okay. As an eagle stirs up. The wing, mm -hmm. okay, like wings, mm -hmm. as the eagle stirs up when it is off, opens its eyes to awaken, because when it wakes up, mm -hmm. it starts flapping its wings. Remember what I was saying about the seats? Yeah. Like flapping in the wings of a, of a bird, you know, in the air, okay, it's supposed to have that effect. Its nest hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. Mm -hmm. Eagles do that. So Yahweh alone led him by transporting him to into exile, and there was no foreign heathen Elohim with him. Mm -hmm. See, when you're following the commandments, you can't have a foreign Elohim mixed with this. Mm -hmm. You either follow in that way of unrighteousness or you're following this way of righteousness. Mm -hmm. You can't mix the two. So you will be separated as being righteous. Mm -hmm. He made him right. Now this, this is, again, this is about fleeing out from unrighteousness and being taken to a place of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Physically, mentally, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. He made him ride to carry oneself up in a chariot in heights elevated above the earth. Mm-hmm. See, when you see this, metaphorically, it's like the wings of an eagle that's going to fly you high elevations above the earth, mm -hmm. as like in a chariot. Mm -hmm. Now, this is in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. It's speaking metaphorical, but remember, Yahweh said he would take them out of the wilderness with speed, you know? Mm -hmm. He would take them to the wilderness. Mm -hmm. A man can't walk as fast as an eagle can fly, mm -hmm. all right? That he might eat the produce of the fields, he made him draw honey from the sti uh, stickiness of the comb, from the rock, which is a fortress. And who is the rock? Yes, Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is a fortress and oil, perfumed anointing oil, olive oil, from the flinty hardened rock. Mm -hmm. So these are the benefits that you get when you go on the righteous side mm -hmm. and you stay away from from the unrighteous side. You don't mingle yourself mm -hmm. with the people to be friends of the world, as Scripture says. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, we're going to go further now mm -hmm. along the same line of thought mm -hmm. about the seat seats and righteousness and your ultimate redemption. Uh -huh. This is where we go. So in Revelation 12, verse 13 through 16, the end time carrying away. Mm -hmm. It's the same idea because the first exodus was a shadow picture of the last exodus that's going to take place. Mm -hmm. And these are people that are going to be righteous people because these are the ones that what? Keep the commandments of Yahshua HaMashiach and have his testimony. Mm -hmm. And his testimony is the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Okay. When the dragon and an extraordinary and fascinating sight saw that he had been hurled with violence to the earth, he pursued by pressing forward with persecution the woman that is a wife who had been given birth as the mother to produce a seed, which was Yahshua, to mm -hmm. the male child, strong to expiate sin through atonement. But the woman 
who is a wife coming into being. Mm -hmm. This is what I started off with in the opening comments. Mm -hmm. You're speaking to the woman out there that is a bride-to-be. She's mm -hmm. not qualified yet. Mm -hmm. She's whoring around in unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. She's not walking in righteousness. She's sleeping with different uh, lovers that are representative of different ideologies. Uh -huh. Not clean yet. Got to get clean. And I'm not saying I'm perfectly clean. Mm -hmm. So I'm not tooting my horn in that way. All I'm saying is we all need to come to this understanding in this place where we got to get rid of the nonsense. Yes. I, I'm speaking to myself mm -hmm. before I get out here and speak to anybody else. Yes. So anybody wants to write nonsense to me, understand I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. I ain't there yet. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get there. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that you want to follow and go along. Yeah. Okay. So it goes on to say, a wife coming into being was given two wings of an eagle. <laughs> okay? Two wings of an eagle. Driven um, from its wing flight driven by blowing air. What did it say in the Torah? This is like wings mm -hmm. flapping in the air. Mm-hmm. These commandments is what's going to preserve you and get you out of here. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to be the church. It ain't mm -hmm. going to be Judaism. It ain't going to be Islam uh -huh. or any other ism or whatever. It's this. There's only one narrow path. That's it. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. But there's only one narrow path. So the blowing of the air that she might fly into the place of the wilderness that is a lonesome, desolate, and solitary to her place of a given opportunity where she is nourished, which strengthen to stiffen, fatten, pamper, and rear up for a time which is in due season and opportunity and times and a half a time from the presence of of the serpent mm -hmm. that is sly, cunning, and is artfully malicious. Mm -hmm. This is your reward if you stay away from unrighteousness mm -hmm. and you stick to the purity of the righteousness of the commandments yes. and, and staying obedient to Yahshua. So the serpent that is sly, cunning, and is artfully malicious spewed with violence water out of his mouth, which is the front edge of a weapon, like a flood, the backside of the woman come from behind who is a wife coming into being. She's not a wife yet. She's in training uh -huh. and she's finding out real quick. If you want to stand in this thing, I'm going to have all hell coming at my backside. Mm -hmm. And she's going to have to make a decision. Either get swallowed up by the flood or I'm moving with right. these eagle wings mm -hmm. that I've been given to fly my to fly me into the place of safety. Mm -hmm. Okay? That he might cause her to be carried away with the feeling of being overwhelmed. This is an overwhelming feeling walk, mm -hmm. as we've talked about before. Can you take the pressure? Mm -hmm. You know? Can you take the pressure? But the earth in verse 16 helped by giving relief to the woman who is a wife coming into being, and the earth opened up its mouth and swallowed up and devoured entirely the flood which the dragon had spewed with violence out of his mouth, which is the front edge of a weapon. Any thoughts? Yeah, what I'm, what, what's coming to me. I hope you can I'm talk hearing, for a little bit because I'm winded now. What, what, what I'm hearing in there is Satan got a flood of weapons. Oh, yeah. Coming at us, huh? And your only transportation to defeat those um, weapons is the commandment mm -hmm. that you need to take your refuge in these commandments so it can lead you to your place of safety. And I'm a witness, John. That's what that's what he gave to me. He gave to me these Ten Commandments. And they bought me out of that trap I was in. Mm -hmm. They bought me out of Satan's devices. And they delivered me over here to safety. Oh, yeah, I know a lot of people saying, well, we're not really safe. We got so much pressure. Com we don't have no pressure coming at us. It just seems like that, you know. But as long as we're in the shadow of his wings, we're in 
his secret place. He can't find us. He's hiding us. Mm -hmm. But we can't see that we are hidden from Satan because the, of the effects that it feels like to the flesh. So people give in, you know. And that's where the fear comes from. Uh -huh. They give in. Yeah, they yeah. give in. They yeah. give up. They yeah. surrender. Don't surrender. Hold on a little while longer. This is what I'm seeing. This woman was with child. Huh? And she's running for her life with the child. And he hit her in another nation and, where they couldn't get to her. And he got her where he couldn't get to her mm -hmm. with a child. I'm, we are carrying this same child within us, running to be birthed, Paul said. Groanings and moanings to give birth to this Ruach. Let it come forth that it might lead you and preserve you. Amen. Amen. Okay, point three, holding on to unrighteousness. Oh. You came up with 2 Peter 2, verse 17 through 22. And what I got out of this, hell-bent on self-destruction. <laughs> Boy, that's my middle name. And my wife could testify to that when I was younger. I still flub every now and then. I still hell-bent on the destruction. John, I just love these discussions because it just seemed like, you know, we just... We do this all the time over right. the phone, but we right. get in person. We didn't and we know just we were talking. in training all these years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me when I was in the military, we would be on guard duty, uh -huh. and we would have I would have these discussions like you know we're from all over the United yeah. States, different states, right. and you get to know the lifestyle of people, how they live in in different states, and it's like it's so foreign. You see, this faith is foreign, mm -hmm. but we are learning the life we're supposed to be living if we go head on and we have these conversations. Come out of that world you in, or that right. culture, right. and come into this faith, and it'll teach you how to get into the kingdom of Yahweh. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, man. Fear will keep you from everything that you should have and deserve to have if you can embrace it. You know, if yes. you can believe it, you know. Anyway, in verse 17, it starts off. These are wells that gushed out as a fountain without <laughs> water. Clouds shrouded in darkness, mm -hmm. carried from a demonic power mm -hmm. by a tempest as a raging squall. So, you know, we live here in South Florida, so we get these hurricanes or these squalls that come in off the ocean man they get they get pretty violent oh yeah you know uh -huh. all of a sudden the trees are whipping everywhere and you're hearing it howling and stuff like that you know so this is what it's trying to get across in the greek and uh, let's see it goes on to say for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness of obscurity forever mm -hmm. forever john forever mm -hmm. forever mm -hmm. for when they speak great swelling bulging rude and arrogant words of emptiness in other words they really don't contain anything mm -mm, but they sound good yeah um words of emptiness they allure with entrapping delusion through the lust for what is forbidden of the flesh through lewdness that is filthy the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error straying from the orthodoxy a tramp and an imposter mm -mm. verse 19 while they promise them liberty mm -hmm. of freedom to indulge in promiscuous sexual behaviors, they themselves are slaves of corruption, decay that leads to ruin, for by whom a person is overcome, to the point of being in a worse state, by him also is also brought into bondage. So it's bad enough that you entertained it, and now you brought into bondage and you're corrupt, but now the person you're indulging with you, you transferred that spirit mm -hmm. into him, and now both of you mm -hmm. are in the same pit. Oh, yeah. You done bought somebody that's like yeah. a adulterer. Yeah. <laughs> for if they have, um, for if after they have escaped the pollutions, a foul-smelling vapor of the world, through the knowledge of Yahweh and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, by way of repetition, entangle in them and overcome to the point of being in a worse state, the latter end is worse than from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it would have been better for you to not learn of the way of Yahshua mm -hmm. um, than to learn of it and then go back to that lifestyle, mm -hmm. you know? 
And uh, you're in a whole lot of trouble once that happens. Because you're more emboldened now. I'm back and stronger. And it goes back to what we talked about in that last one about testing the spirit of Yahweh mm -hmm. with a wrong spirit. Mm -mm. You're provoking the spirit of Yahweh. Yes. And you can't do that and expect to get away with it. No man has been able, able to do that. Satan himself did that. And he never got away with it. It isn't going to get away with it. And you think you're more powerful than him? Oh, no. Who do you think your teacher is? Mm -hmm. For it would have been, in 21, for it would have been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness, which is the worth of one's character, than having known mm -hmm. the full knowledge of it to turn it to the holy commandment as the authoritative prescription delivered to them. Verse 22. But it has happened to them According to the true proverb, the, this fictitious illustration, a dog returns to his own vomit that was already disgorged, mm -hmm. and a sow having rolling by circulating in the mire that is muddy. Mm -hmm. What is your thought? Well, Rook Hashem, uh, as we always talk, these are teachers. Yeah. Teachers. What do you call them? False teachers. Do you know the difference between a false teacher and a teacher of Yahweh? Which we if, covered in the last yeah, the two videos back. If you don't know his word, how can you know who's teaching truth and who's right, not? Right. You know, and, and Paul said um, that they, uh, they lure you in with great, great swelling words, you know, and Peter comes and he reiterates on it, you know. And bills on it. They're telling you they got some good words, as Paul said, and some good speeches. Yeah. He do. said, but you better put a mark on them and avoid them because they deceive the hearts of the simple. Are we so simple minded that we can't hear when somebody is telling us a lie? You know, have they dressed it up so beautifully that all you do is you see how beautiful it is. You don't care if it's a lie of uh, the truth or not. You know, it's many times you say, uh, it used to be this singer, she'd say, uh, maybe flowers don't mean I love you. Maybe flowers mean we should just be friends. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, because a man buys you flowers don't mean he love you. <laughs> to her, that's what Yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But to a lot of people, when they buy you flowers or give you gifts, that mean they love you or they care about you. You know, not or they necessarily feel guilty that something they did and they're buying flowers and try to make you soften up. Yeah. yeah. Whatever the reason yeah. they are bringing you these flowers, yeah. you know, and, and, and people for whatever reason, they flop to these teachers. What yeah. is it that they're selling you? What is it that they're giving you that you uh, will sell your soul to it for? You know, what are you um Giving in exchange for your soul, as the scriptures say. What would a man give in exchange right. for his soul? Right. And are we questioning these things? Are we reading the scriptures and we see Yahweh's word and yet somebody can come up and say, that's not what it meant? How can we, how can we just look at these things and receive these things knowing that this is the reason I'm running to this house. It's supposed to be a house of safety. And yet I get in here and the same thieves and the same um, abusers are in this building that I'm running from. And I done came up to them, although you might be in a different body, but it's the same spirit. Right, right, right. Same spirit, John. And they and for the life of me, they go to these places every Sabbath or every Sunday, whatever day they go on, and they see these spirits in there. Huh? How can you tell me um, that adultery is wrong and you point out there to the adulterers and then we got them sitting right up here in the same building. Right. Might be sitting next to you in the yeah. seat, you yeah. know, yeah. and uh, telling me I'm in a safe place now. No, I'm not. No. No, I'm not. Most of the places I've been in are not kosher at all. But my point yeah. in this whole set of, in this whole discussion here is, man, where is the safe, the safe place? Where is it? We read it. Right. It's in it's in the You uh, need those eagles wings. wings under the shadow of his wings. Yep. That's where your safety is. This is the safety. 
Why they promising you said yep. you you liberty? Yep. They make you out of prisoner right with and, them. And I just want to say, because somebody might say, oh, are you relying on those physical things? No. This is a physical thing that points, this is a shadow that points to the real thing, which is Yahshua HaMashiach. I better he is the Torah. He is the commandments. Yes, he is. And, and uh, not better than that, but even more, a little bit more. You couldn't have got to him unless the one that was in you I would have never known you to about him. these things. Huh? And if because, I did, I would have never had any interest to wear them to begin with. Because Yeshua is living through us. Right. His word lives through us. Right. So that's his word is bringing that to you. And if they got, if anybody, anybody don't want to take hold to his word, that's their problem. Right. You join them. Join this unrighteous, hold on to your unrighteousness people. But if you want righteousness, let the word live. Right. He's the living word. He's the living Torah. It's him. It's him that teaches us to put these things on. Right. It's him that teaches us to observe the Shabbat every week. It's him that teaches us about his feast days. It's him that teaches us about his sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And so we, all our confession... It's him. It's in him. Amen. All right. So uh, accompanying scriptures, I, I've got 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, mm -hmm. verses 8 through 12. I'm going to kind of breeze through this a little bit. Yes. Verse 8. And when the lawless one, a Gentile not subject to Jewish Torah law, will be revealed, whom Yahweh will consume, and the act of, of taking away violently with the breath of his mouth and destroy with brightness of his coming. The coming, I found this to be interesting. Never saw this before. This is interesting because this speaks to what I said in the introduction to the Revelation series that's up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. The coming, you would think the word coming doesn't really mean that much. Mm -hmm. In the Greek, it means the coming of him to punish yes. Jerusalem with his presence. Mm -hmm. to punish Jerusalem. Now, why is Joshua coming to punish Jerusalem? Because it's Babylon the Great, and that's where the great whore sits, which is mm -hmm. Talmudic Judaism. Mm -hmm. That's why. And naturally, the beast is sitting there in the temple they're constructing that everybody is applauding and giving money to, mm -hmm. they're building a house for the man of sin. <laughs> Christians and mm -hmm. Jews and Gentiles not understanding because of the deception of the devil what this means. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is, now it appears that the name of Yahweh is beginning to form on the eastern wall of the Temple Mount. Yeah. Three of the four letters have been formed. And the Jews are saying, when the fourth letter, the, which is the first one, mm -hmm. appears and the full name appears, that's a sign the Messiah is coming. Mm -hmm. This is a lying sign wondering me. Everybody's taking this from Yahweh. Mm -hmm. This is not from Yahweh. This is from Satan the devil. Mm -hmm. Because they're believing that, that when that name appears, the man, is, what they would call the Jewish Messiah, is going to be the man of sin that's going to come and sit in that temple. Mm -hmm. That's going to be their cue to build the temple. Mm -hmm. And the whole world is going to go for that. So the, here's the sign. The name of God is on this. That's not the name of God. That's the name of Yahweh, mm -hmm. which the Jews will not pronounce. And what did Yahshua say to the, the Sadducees, I think? Mm -hmm. He reprimanded Yahshua about his, his disciples not talking about him. He mm -hmm. says, if my disciples won't do it, the walls and the rocks will yeah, do God. this mm -hmm. with my name. Mm -hmm. And it's because the Jews won't pronounce his name mm -hmm. and he won't teach the Gentiles how to pronounce his name and they try to keep his name secret. Yahweh is allowing his name to be displayed on the Eastern Wall. But that's going to be a sign from the devil mm -hmm. to trick everybody. This is time to build a temple. Mm -hmm. 
This is how crafty this gets. He's it's crafty. a miracle, and it looks like it comes from Yahweh. But if you don't understand prophecy, and you don't understand what this is all about, this is going to blow right past you, yeah. and you're going to get caught up in it. That's strength there. That's power. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. So let's continue to read. Is according to the working of powerful efficiency of Satan. See, Satan works all kinds of efficient Miracles. Mm -hmm. okay. And all power, miraculous signs of ceremonies and lying wonders with omens. Mm -hmm. Is that not an omen with mm -hmm. Yahweh's name coming up on the wall? Mm -hmm. Looks like a very righteous thing. Mm -hmm. But everybody's falling for it for the wrong reason. And all the unrighteous deception and delusion among those who perish to be destroyed fully because instead... They did not receive the love and affection of the truth through Torah, that they might be saved and delivered from with protection. Mm. So we better not fall into this group. Mm -mm. If you want to have the righteousness and go to a place of safety and be fully protected, you better stay away from the unrighteousness of these deceptions that Satan is perpetuating on mankind right now. Oh, yes. And for this reason, Yahweh will send to dispatch to them a strong delusion that causes them to stray from orthodoxy that they should um, commit themselves to believe and have faith in the lie. See, what he's saying is they're going to, at this point, the state of mind and the spiritual mind that they have, they no longer have a point. Yahweh's saying, I gave you time to accept righteousness. And because you didn't accept righteousness and you accepted unrighteousness, I am now done with you. And you're going to have to believe the lie, even if you don't want to. And man, I see people doing that now. That's what I'm going to say, John, because they say that commandments are dead. It, it's pronouncing orthodoxy there. Right. But they, that was to keep them. The commandment was designed to keep them, but today they call it orthodox. Right. You know, mm -hmm. but... It was designed to keep them, but now they done made it like it's their enemy, and it's a curse to them to, okay, it is. if that can't keep to you. To their flesh, it is. Yes. yes. Because the flesh is saying, oh, hell no. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give up this lifestyle. You're my enemy. So that's that war Paul was talking about mm -hmm. that I have in my members. Yes. Yes. It is a war. Strong you're fighting right here, a brother. war one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Either you're on that side or you're this side. Don't think you're going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a war. Choose today. That's it. Mm -hmm. Choose. Ooh, so then it ends it. up in verse 12 that they all may be condemned who did yeah. not believe the truth of Torah but had pleasure approved and promoted its unrighteousness. Unrighteousness. Mm. Hell bent on destruction. That's strong there, brother. Hell bent on destruction. Yeah. Here's your wings of the eagle that can flap in the wind. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not wearing them, but you're living it, that's what I want to emphasize. Mm -hmm. That you're living this. Okay? You're living this. If you feel compelled to wear it, you wear it. But what I'm saying is you got to be living this. Because there's a lot of people I see that wear stuff like this, but they don't live it. Mm -hmm. So this means nothing. Don't get caught up in this right, either. Right. That's another deception. Right, right. That's what we're talking about. We're not we're we're looking at all these examples. Right. And we're gonna examine ourselves and being careful that we don't fall into the same don't temptations. want to follow into yes, it. Right. Could sometimes uh -huh. make a mistake in right, judgment, right. but don't want, want to, to do it. Right, exactly. Exactly. And I believe Yahweh will show you, mm -hmm. if you believe in that, he will show you if you did make a mistake and you want to know you made a mistake, he will show you that and you can change that. I, I believe with all my heart, John, when Paul wrote, there's no temptation that is common unto man that with that same temptation, Yahweh has not made a way to escape. It's a way out of it. You if might you be think you falling, but just about the time before you fall, if you don't want to, he'll make a way that you don't have to. But when you desire to do it and you just surrender to it, most of the time you're going to do it. Most of the time. But these are some powerful. Uh, you got any closing scriptures. comments? We closing. I, yeah. I, well, my closing comment, if I may, if I can just pray, okay. just say a prayer, you know. 
that the word of Yahweh uh, prevails in our in our life and in our land. You know, Abba, in the name of Yeshua, Father, we just thank you, Father. We thank you for the strength to sit here and profess that which you have given us, Father, and to proclaim that. And we continually pray, Father, that you will humble us, Father, and keep us seeking your face, Father, that you will truly indeed heal us, and not only heal us, but heal our land, Father. Send your healing and your mercy into our land, Father, that we will seek after your face to serve you and to love you with all of our heart and with all of our strength, Father. Let your word, Father, take root, Father. Let your word, Father, hit the atmosphere and hit the air and spread like eagle's wings, Father, that people will take refuge in your word, Father, and just continue to keep us and protect us and keep your hedge around us, Father, because we know the flood is already sent out. And so we continually bless you and we thank you, Father. We thank you for this opportunity to glorify your name and to exalt your precious and holy name. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen. Amen. Baruch thank Hashem you. Yahweh. Yes. Thank you for that prayer. I ain't adding nothing to that, if you can believe it. <laughs> I don't We're believe gonna it. Go, yeah, you going to believe it now? <laughs> We're going to close right now. Yes. So we just want to thank all of you for joining us today. We hope it was enlightening, refreshing. We hope that uh, it expanded your thoughts and your horizons and your potential of how to stay away from unrighteousness and embrace the righteousness and the wings of the eagle that will carry you to your redemption. Yes. And with that, we thank you until the next time. For watching Through the Eyes of an Elder Discussions, Shalom. Shalom.